Sam from Sheridan Computers. I'm going to be looking at how to install the latest version of PFSense, which is 2.4.5 as of April 2020. Um, a lot of my videos might seem random because I seem to cover a lot of subjects. They're not actually random, I just don't go out of the way to um, plan my videos. I literally just do videos of projects as they are coming up. And I have this uh, project to install PFSense for a client, so I'm going to go through it and uh, we're going to record the process while I'm at it. If you like this video, please uh, take the time to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you hit the notifications icon, you'll receive notifications of any new videos as they are released. If you would like to hire us for any projects whatsoever IT related, head across to our website at sheridan.co.uk. If you click on the hire us button, fill out the form, you can leave some details on what you're looking for and we'll get back to you. While you're on our website, you can also find out some more information on us, who we are, what we do and some of the clients that we deal with. So let's carry on with the PFSense installation. The first thing that we're going to need to do is head across to uh, pfsense.org and download the image of PFSense. So we're going to want to go ahead and hit the download link. Um, current version is 2.4.5 as I mentioned. I'm going to the AMD 64-bit image. I'm going to select the USB Memstick installer. Um, you can also go for a CD image here if you want to install it on a machine with a CD in it. We're going to go with the Memstick installer and select your console. 99% of the time you're going to want to select VGA. Uh, I'm just going with Serial because I'm doing over a Serial link. But you'll want VGA. Select the closest place to you. Go ahead and hit the download button. Hit save. And when it's um, finished saving, we're going to want to um, have to go ahead and burn that to the USB stick. So that's downloaded. I'm actually using Etcher to burn this to a stick. Let's go ahead and flash that. So we've burnt it and now we're going to boot off it. Now this system does have a um, previous version of PFSense on it, 2.3.4. I tried to do the upgrade and it failed miserably. So we're going to go ahead and um, do a full install of the latest version. So, um, we're going to go ahead and install PFSense. Choose your default key map. I'm going to go ahead with um, Auto UFS. I only have one um, drive in this system. I'm going to go with GPT partitions. That's fine, it's finish. So the installation is complete. Do we want to uh, open the shell and make any modifications? Nope. Let's go ahead and reboot. And you can remove the installation media at this point. So the installation is complete and um, we've booted up and as you can see the PFSense box is set on 192.168.1.1 um, so we should be able to go ahead and log into that. Go ahead and uh, ignore the security certificate warning and now um, we can go ahead and log in. Let's go ahead and log in, so admin pfsense. 
So welcome to PFSense and now we can go through the setup wizard. Host name, so give it a host name, DNS servers, I'm just going to stick Google in here for the time being. So 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. Um, time server host name, you can leave them as what they are. I'm going to set them to the UK ones. Set your time zone. So in Europe, London. And configure your one interface. So I'm going to set it to static. And I'm going to put my static IP address in here. And the gateway. So you'll need to stick your own details in here. So stick your details in as I've just done next to that. Well, LAN, you can change the LAN here if you'd like. I'm just going to leave it on 192.168.1.1, which was the default. Admin password. So you're going to want to um, change the password here. Let's go ahead and do that. So that's the initial configuration complete. We can go ahead and hit reload. So congratulations, um, we're now configured. Let's hit finish. So as you can see, we're on the latest version. Um, we've got CPU information here. So this one's got AS and I CPU crypto, yes, um, but it's disabled at the moment. So we need to go ahead and configure that. Um, and you can see it's hardly using any resources. Um, this has got four gig of ROM in it and the 15 gig hard drive, an SSD drive. Um, so now let's go ahead and look at the initial configuration options. So we're going to system, general setup. Um, again, this gives you the opportunity to change your host name, your domain, your DNS servers, um, and your time zone, the theme. I prefer dark personally, so we'll go ahead and select dark. Um, whether you want your host name uh, to appear in the menu, default is no. Uh, interface sort order, um, that's pretty much all we need for there. I'm going to change it to black for the login as well. So settings have been changed. So if we go ahead and reload that, we have a nice dark theme. So proceeding on, advanced. Let's have a look what here. So in the advanced settings, um, <coughs> excuse me, it's set to use HTTPS. You can change that to HTTP if you'd like to for some reason. Um, and you can set the SSL certificate. Uh, we'll look at that later. I'm not actually going to look at that in this video. Um, some various other options we've got. Uh, disable web configure re redirect rule. So uh, when it's unchecked, access to the web configurator is always permitted on port 80, regardless of the listening port configured. Um, you can generally leave that off, but if you're going to lock yourself out for some reason. Um, So we've got HTTP strict security. We can leave that on. Um, just have a look if there's anything that we need to change in here. Um, um, DNS rebind checks. So um, when this is unchecked, the system is protected against DNS rebinding, rebinding attacks. Um, and you can put alternate host names in here. So if you put alternate host names in, um, That'll allow us to refer to it as like if gateway.yourdomain.com if the host name is different. Um, so most of these options you don't want to change. Um, one of the things that you'll want to set up is enable secure secure shell access. Um, possibly depending on your needs. Uh, and it set it on default as 22 so we can SSH into the box. Um, you can change the login protection, the serial console speed. 
um, you wouldn't normally need to mess with. I'm logged in over a serial at the moment. Um, and you can choose to password protect the console menu. Now, that's generally a good idea. So if anybody um, does jump into the console, then they can't do anything about the password. You have to log in first. And as you'll notice, my system at the back now says log in. It has to log me out. It's gone to the login prompt, so it's protected the console menu. Done the firewall and that. Um, I don't think there's anything that you need to change in here off the bat. Um, you can disable scrubbing things, which is um, we can go through these in further options, in further videos because they are useful sometimes. Um, using VoIP and things. Um, you can adjust the maximum states of your firewall rules. If your firewall is going to have a lot of states, you might need to adjust this. But out of the box, there's not really too much that you need to adjust in here. Um, so network reflect, uh, network address translation. Um, so we can change that depending, again, on your requirements. Um, and it's got the explanation of what um, that is basically if you're hosting something on the outside of the box you can't generally access it from the inside um now you can do enable automatic creation of additional NAT rules within the internal networks um so there's not too much that you need to change in there um networking so allow ipv6 um by default all ipv6 traffic is blocked um You can change uh, IPv6, DNS and stuff. Um, hardware checks and offloading. And miscellaneous settings. Um, if we need to set proxies up, we can do our load balancing. Um, you can enable the power daemon under here, so it will you know, use that to um, reduce the power usage. So the one thing that I did mention was um, cryptographic hardware. By default, it's set to none. I'm going to go ahead and set this to uh, AS, ANI and BSD crypto um, because my box does support AS and I. Um, thermal sensors, um, they don't work on this box, but if you're using the Intel, then you can uh, use the Intel or the AMD ones to detect the temperature of the box. And that's about all there is to configure in there, I think. Um, if you're running off a USB stick, if you've installed it onto USB and you've got a, you don't want to be writing to the disk all the time, then in here you can also tell it to use memory file system for temp and var. So when it's writing log files, they're not um, flashing your disk all the time. Uh, and NetGate ID device, uh, do not send NetGate ID device ID with user agent. Um, it's up to yourself whether you're sending that or not. So system tunables, there's not too much that we need to play with in there. Notifications. So if you go through here and you put in your email server, um, the port, whether you're using a secure connection, or the from email address, notification email address, um, and the off settings, etc., then you can get, it will send you emails for um, notification purposes. So I'm not going to do that for all this because it's just a video. I don't actually need to do this at the moment. The other um, option you might want to look at is packages. So if you go into packages, um, currently we have no packages installed, but we can go into available packages and see the packages that are available for PFSense and there is um, an extensive amount of them. Um, yeah, there's various packages that you might want in here. Um, HA proxy, for example, um, iperf, which is, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and install that one, which is useful for throughput testing. So if we click install a package, it'll go ahead and it'll do that for us. And it's pretty quick to do that. So we've installed iperf pretty quickly. Um, so we've got a HA proxy, um, NRPE if we were um, querying the host via Nagios, NTOP, NG, um, yeah, there's various options. You can go through these yourself. OPN, open VPN client export is a handy one to have. PF blocker NG is a handy plugin to have installed. Um, Snort, I use Snort. A lot of people use Suricata. Um, so that's a 
well battle tested um, IPS and IDS. Um, so there's a, quite a few options in there. You can set CFTPD servers up there. Uh, we've got Zabbix agents. Again, these are going to be um, dependent on what system you're using and what you want. Um, well, we're now actually. I'm going to go ahead and install the OpenVPN client because I do need that. Client export, that's very handy to have. If you're connecting users via OpenVPN, you can literally just export the config and then run the setup file or import the OpenVPN file. Uh, the next options are under interfaces. So this box has three LAN ports. Um, we can go ahead and add the other one in here. I'm not using it, so I'm just gonna leave that as blank. We can set up interface groups, um, wireless. There's no wireless support on this box. Uh, we can go ahead and create VLANs in here. Um, and your bridges. And then you can go into the settings and obviously and change um, your interface settings as required. I'm not going to go into the um, one settings on this. So firewall, we can set aliases up in here um, for for IP ports, and it just makes them easy to address in the firewall. Um, you can set your NAT up. So. Um, Port forwarding, one to one mappings, um, outbound NAT, which it sets up automatically for you and puts the uh, LAN in there so it gets um, translated to the WAN interface. And you can set uh, you know your firewall rules here. There's a traffic shaper. I'll do another video on how to set these up. I'm literally just having a quick walk through the options for you uh, and virtual IP addresses. Under the services option, you'll find um, where you can set up the DHCP servers, uh, auto configuration, backup, DNS folders and resolvers, um, your NTP server settings, wake on LAN settings because you can wake devices up via this. Um, and then you can set IPsec VPNs up, L2TP or open VPNs, uh, VPN settings that way. And under status, you can see the various statuses of the system and then diagnostics. So that was a quick overview of how to install PFSense 2.4.5. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is a project that I'm doing for somebody. So uh, a friend of mine needs a PFSense box. And I said I'd set one up for him. So while I was doing it, I figured we'd uh, take the video and go through and record how to do it. Just so if you need to do it yourself, you can see how it was done. So if you like this video, please um, do take the time to hit the like button. It does help the channel a lot and consider subscribing to us. Uh, and if you'd like to hire us, don't forget to head across to our website, click on the hire us button and you can do it that way.